By now you've created several multi-view drawings uh, using typically a isometric view from the book. Now I'm going to go the other way and show you how to create a isometric view um, from sometimes a isometric view or a multi-view drawing. Um, these can be pretty helpful to ha include on a drawing because it gives at a quick glance anyone looking at the print a, an idea of what that part's going to look like or assembly. Uh, on, pa on chapter 5 they have several different types of pictorials. These are pictorial drawings. Um, including isometric. I will sign some uh, questions on that. Uh, the, the chapter 5 focuses on drawing these by hand. I frankly don't foresee you ever really need to do that much. So I'm going to focus on us using AutoCAD to create these isometric views. But just so you have an understanding of, that those type of things exist, you'll, I'll have you run through those questions. So I'm going to get started with uh, part P411 from chapter 4 on page 460. I got my multi-view drawn here, and now I'm going to do an isometric out here. Uh, I'm going to start with kind of the front surface if we were... This is... So the front surface looking this way, if I were to look at the... the I had a left side view here and then this surface right here. Uh, so for when you get started with this, you're gonna click down here where it says isometric drafting. Click on that, turn that on. Now see how it turned your uh, cursor here, green and red, and kinda tilted it. So we're gonna, I'm gonna start with some construction lines and it will snap now to 30 degrees. So I want it there there and I already have one going vertically. I'm going to delete this one. Okay, so that front surface goes up 50. So instead of offset now, because if I do offset, you'll see, say I say 50 and go here. It's got, it's not going um, perpendicular or following this line the way I want it to. So I'm going to use the copy command, which actually in a large a lot of ways you can just replace the offset command with copy. So see now it's going in the direction I want it to at the distance I need. So 50 up. Uh, then following this one it's going to go back 110. And then copy I want to go from here this way 55. And I can keep on typing with the copy command, so also 15 and 40. Repeat copy. I'm just right clicking here to go at the speed I'm going. Uh, go up 20. Okay, that's good for that. I'm gonna kind of fill this in with some visible lines so we can start seeing what I'm making. So line. Connect the dots. I missed one. Use match properties. Select visible. There we go. So there's that front for front surface. I'm gonna do the L shape going this way now. Copy. Put one here and here. Right, copy. This one going down from here. Fifteen. And I already have, let's see here, I'm going to copy this one, going back 110, okay, like I said, this gets, it step, do this a little bit at a time, because the more you get on here, the harder it is to kind of see what you're working with. But as you can see, what I just did there with my copy, you can see the measurement on there. Now it's 110, so I know I'm in the right spot. Um, I 
need another one here. Back 20. Alright, now I'm going to fill in this surface. Match properties. Okay. So this is starting to get filled in. So that goes back 20, so we need an edge here. Uh, match properties. I'm going to make layer, make current. Okay. So this goes back to 110. Okay. So now we got that basic shape. Now we have a cylinder and a hole and two holes that go on this top surface here. Um, so we're going to use an ellipse to create these holes. And AutoCAD has a pretty nifty built in way of doing this. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to copy. This one, I need a midpoint, mid, copy this, it's back, 80, so I'm going to type ellipse, well, so just to show you, if I did circle, um, there's a couple different options, I sewed left, top, and right, so top, would kind of lay flat on the surface like this. So if I do circle, as you can see, that does not look right. So we got to use the ellipse. So ellipse. So I got a couple different options here: arc, center, and iso circle. So we're going to select iso circle, click here, and then just enter our radius or select diameter. Uh, it's 46, so that's 23. Select this, copy, it goes up 35, and the real nice thing here is the ISO circle puts its quadrants here and here, so we just have to connect quadrants from there to there to finish off our cylinder, or if it's a hole. So line, quad, here, there. Copy it, there, to there. So I'm going to trim out some stuff. Don't need this, this, or that. Uh, there's a hole going through this one, so we'll start the ellipse command again. And that one is, has a radius, radius of eight. And I did it wrong because I did not select ISO circle. Ellipse, ISO, ISO, center there, and eight. Okay, so that's that. Okay, ellipse, ISO. This one's back 35 and has a radius of nine. Now if that only went down, this goes far the far the enough down that I don't have to do anything more with it, but say it only went down like an inch. So or five inches, let's say. Move or not move. Copy. Uh, five. So we'd have to trim out this other part there and that would look have a how you would display a, the top and bottom of a hole but if you if I take this and copy it down 15 you'll see that it's well below the top of the hole so it wouldn't be seen 
We could add in hidden lines on this, but it's not necessary. Uh, I believe that is it for this part. So what we'll do with our the drawings I'm going to assign is we'll have our multi-view and an isometric. They Let's see here. They do say in the book that as you can see, this is a bit big, so they usually scale these down. So let's do a scale. Oh, I did stretch. Scale. There we go. Base point. I want to do, let's try 0.8. There you go. Yeah, it still looks a little big, but still, we can scale them down to whatever size so they fit within our drawing. But as you can see now, we can have, we'll eventually have dimensions on these, and then this guy here will kind of just be a good reference point for anyone looking at the print.